So how did I get to do ayahuasca? Well, I guess like a bit everyone, you know, you, you're on the internet or you hear someone talking about it. And I was on the internet like nine years ago um, looking for, I don't know, plant medicine because I was very interested in marijuana and ma magic mushrooms and how, what type of effect that has on the mind and on the body and how, it is, how is it connected to the spirit potentially. And that's when I learned about ayahuasca, the most potent uh, psychedelic. That's, that's how it's described. Then it turns out that there are others that could be more potent like bufo or other things. But without getting into that, I, I was highly interested in ayahuasca. But what I read was that it's not recreational, you know. It's not for recreational use. It's a very nasty drink, first of all, that you need to drink. It tastes like like ass and that you're gonna throw up and vomit and uh, you're gonna have diarrhea and whatnot you're gonna feel like you're gonna die and you're gonna see your death and ayahuasca in one of the indigenous languages in Peru means little death something like that so that sounded all scary like you have this perception that it's freaking scary so I always had like super huge respect towards ayahuasca mother ayahuasca and DMT. DMT is a substance, uh, the psychoactive substance contained in the ayahuasca. But if you talk to the indigenous people, they don't know anything science-wise. Maybe they read some stuff, but what they're going to tell you is that their ancestors told them how to mix these, this ayahuasca root with other plants so that you can actually digest uh, ayahuasca. And that's the magic formula for them that is going to... Um, have that's gonna enable you to ex to witness this medicine they see it as a medicine as a as a cure to reconnect with your spirit to purify yourself from all your impurities and uh, it doesn't come to surprise that ayahuasca was also always given even to kids um, during the ceremonies because they believe it's a true good thing to give and to do to give to a child to, to give to humans and to do for yourself so all that sounded interesting and since I'm very open-minded when it comes to plant medicine because uh, I made experiences I was always intrigued by this but they also said that DNT ayahuasca comes your way it will you will attract it at some point in your life and uh, when you will be ready for it so given that sometimes I had friends you know telling me like yo we should try to find on the dark web like uh, DMT and order it online and I was never a fan of the idea uh, because yes I know I could potentially be capable of uh, getting the substance in a materialistic way but you know, it's easy. You, you, you look for it and you should find it. But um, spiritually speaking, I felt that was wrong. And I felt like I should do it the way that I always believed was right. Meaning that it should come my way. So last November, so three months ago, November 2023, I had uh, a very intense month. And because I'm doing five different things at the same time and when you wake up and you check your phone you have 20 messages coming your way and they're all important and they need critical thinking abilities in, in order to solve them because they're all equally important because they all are for different projects that I really put my heart soul and a lot of money in it so that can give pressure and sometimes you're just not on top of your game like you wake up in the morning and you're tired and I had a lot of consecutive weeks feeling drained because of the amounts of work I had on me and people visiting and shooting and whatnot. So one day I went to the gym alone because I usually go with the coach and going alone to the gym allows me to think. And during that session, I started listening to, to a podcast of, uh, of Jake Paul um, sharing his story of uh, uh, taking plant medicine. And in that moment, I realized there was something in the back of my head that it came out during that time. That I, in that day, I decided that I was ready 
for this experience for ayahuasca and uh, it's hard to explain it's just an internal feeling that tells you like you know that thing that you've been thinking about for so long you're ready for it now uh, I felt like I needed medicine to purify myself it was deeper than that. It was just a gut feeling. It's even hard to explain and put it in words. So I went home and I texted a few friends. I was like, I think I'm ready for it. And maybe we could look for a place where we could do it, which kind of went a bit against what I said before, that I, it should come my way, right? But anyways, the same day I made a video about visualization and manifestation. And after that, I felt even more drained because I was uh, pretty tired. But my friends were throwing a, a barbecue. So I told myself, like, you know what? You should be working, but you're not gonna feel good. So I think if you're gonna go visit your, visit your friend, even though you don't feel like going as much, I think you should still go. I should still go and enjoy my time and spend time with them. And as soon as I arrived, one of my best friends, she goes like, Yo, if you want, someone has DMT here and we could smoke it. And when she told me that, I could make sense of it. I started laughing. I was like, what are you talking about? You're joking, right? But when I understood she was serious, I got the chills. It cannot be that the nine years of my existence and my existence where I think about DMT and I tell myself the right time will come and it will come my way, that the day that I decide and I feel that I'm ready for it, it comes my way. The same, I swear to God, it was like maybe 12 hour span since the moment I felt it and I decided, I told my friends, so I put it out in there in the world, I spoke it, I spoke it into existence and it just materialized. So smoking DMT is a very different experience than ayahuasca, although it's the same substance. Because first of all, from a, um, uh, for an eff like the, the effect, the, like the, the consumption is, is is smoking orally, so you're not uh, ingesting it, you're not digesting it, and the experience only lasts five to ten minutes. But those five ten minutes can feel like a lifetime. In fact, they did when I when I when I took DMT when I smoked DMT for the first time. I had the most insane experience ever. It was something that you can't even comprehend. Like, uh, it's hard to, even for me to comprehend that I did it. Like, the amounts of overload of information that I got through that experience was almost overwhelming, but in a good way. So first of all, the setup was perfect because under the stars, it was quiet and it was just magical how it happened the same day. So even though it scared me, I still went for it because I was like, it's a sign from the universe, from God, whoever you want to name in this situation, but there was a sign given by, yeah, for me, the universe. And um, so basically you take one hit, like you, you, you use a pipe, you use like a, a normal pipe, like a long pipe, like I guess you could use it for weed. I don't really know, but anyways, they put a small amount there, which looks like a small amount, but it's actually a strong hit. And the way it works is you light it up once, you take a hit, you, you keep it inside, then you take a second hit, you keep it inside, and at that point, after the second hit, I already had the strongest visuals that I ever got from any psychedelic, LSD, uh, mushrooms, wherever it is. And then you need to take a third hit by keeping everything inside. So I take the third hit, and while taking it, I can just see the, the, um, the fire like from my from my uh, from my lighter just just this flame going into darkness and suddenly I was in another in another universe and uh, my friend was holding my head and she was she was telling me to keep it in to not cuff it out because you want to explode like your lungs are full are filled with smoke and the experience feels already so intense because of the visuals that you just want to cuff it out but the secret is to keep it in so she was reminding me all the time to keep it in, keep it in, keep it in. And I just had this, I was just in another place. And I had this entity in front of me, like something that looked like a, like a, an, like an insect, like a, that almost looked like a clown at first, 
kind of giggling something like almost evil at the beginning but then it was like funny it was a good entity and this thing moving around me like a like a vesp like a bee or I don't know hard to explain and I could see all these neon colors um, changing in the background and I remember this feeling of being welcomed in a new realm like in this new world and I was like wow and I had memories of uh, things I heard about DMT coming up in that moment I was like oh my god this is it and after five minutes of this super intense visual experience and a lot of emotions and feeling like reality didn't exist anymore that I didn't exist anymore I came back to earth and, and after like an hour I did it again um, I decided to go into it again and uh, and damn that was I, I took another three hit like we did the first time and I s seemingly had the same experience but then my friend because I after taking I got literally stuck like when you take it you get literally stuck like I didn't really move I was my muscles were stiff for like five minutes and I had my pipe in my mouth and my friend just just saw that I still had it and she just lighted it up again and told me to take another hit and I heard that and I remember opening my eyes a little and seeing the DMT getting burnt and after the fourth hit I went into the fucking hole like I went into the darkness I didn't see anything I would just see like far far universes around me and then I would go into it and come back to reality for a second and then get dragged away into another reality and like memories I, it's hard to explain and I really felt also like emotional in this like you, I would feel everything all at the same time but at the same time I didn't exist so I guess that's what they call ego death like the concept of I of me of skin bones flesh feelings uh, you know all your senses were gone that was not there which is a very humbling experience and then I remember like coming back to reality every now and then because my friend was like touching me sometimes and that would bring me back for a second and then and I remember I felt like there was uh, yeah like uh, like some trauma some trauma somewhere and I remember that I was about to lean into it like in this even darker side of me but because I looked around and I saw people that I didn't really know because there were other people there I didn't feel like going into it so I let it be and that's exactly when I noticed that I needed a proper ceremony and that probably the encounter with the with DMT that day was just the start of a journey and not the final destination so that day I, I, I really understood that ayahuasca is waiting for me somewhere and that uh, I will need a proper ceremony to actually open myself up and go into my trauma and it's part of your blind spot like you don't really know what it could be sometimes you have a feeling but we also have these uh, blind spots they live in the shadow we don't really know what's it what's there and that's the whole point because a lot of uh, like we think we are aware but a true aware person knows that there is so much so many things about ourselves that we don't know there are so many things about yourself that you don't know you think you might know but the truth is you don't know so I knew that I didn't know many things about myself that maybe it's very obvious to other people or maybe those people don't even know it because it's so deeply ingrained in myself that no one knows about it so anyways my mind was blown um, and I went home that day and yeah I just you know tried to make sense of it but it was so so much that it just impossible to comprehend like it took me days to I, for days I would think about it and be like what what went down there I have no idea and um, but one takeaway from that experience was that I don't exist like I'm more insignificant than what I think I am and that time doesn't exist time is just a construct 
and you know we stress ourselves a lot for time like I wanna this is my year this is my week this is my day today I need to achieve this this and that but you know sometimes it's not in the it's not the right time for something you know sometimes you just need to wait the stars need to align it's not written in the cards for you to have this much success this much fame in this precise moment you're not ready for it whatever it is so time the concept of the click, uh, clicking of the the concept of the ticking clock is it's a social construct and we define our life a lot around it which is helpful because it keeps us uh, you know on track in many ways but sometimes we we give it too much importance we we stress the process because we see time passing we see this clock this calendar and we stress about it so time doesn't exist and uh, what exists is our internal process and how we process everything and sometimes it just takes time <laughs> and, uh, and so yeah that was the main takeaway and like a reminder to relax a reminder to chill out that things will work out eventually if you keep working on the things you're working on including yourself and DMT really also let me like help me understand by by giving me this message made me understand that I need to upgrade the person the internal person to the person that I'm that I am becoming because I'm doing so many new things that I need to update myself basically like my mind knows what to do but my body my 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 identity still needs to catch up with the version that I'm trying to become and that takes time you, you know you you have an amazing idea today and a new business you start working on it but you still need to fully comprehend what it means to become that person and actually embody it makes sense by the way I'm happy f to read your comments because this is a very important video so um, feel free to comment anything in the comment section I'll happily respond and it will make it, it way more engaging for everyone watching this video to read through the comments and share experiences if you did DMT if you're interested if you want to know more and yeah um, so then I went back to life and uh, and I just kept going I you know like after a day or two of recovery I uh, of processing I, I was okay like I was physically fine like I, I didn't have like a strong hangover I was just tired because I didn't sleep much but I was absolutely fine also after five to ten minutes after DMT you're back to normal you can drive you should maybe but uh, you can do anything like you're not drunk you're not high you're back to normal you're just overwhelmed by the experience but you're back to reality and uh, yeah um, I started I continued working and one week later I flew to Thailand because there was a field work conference in Bangkok and I had a lot of things planned there interviews my first concert ever like I rapped in front of like 600 people something like that and while going there I remembered that five years earlier I met someone in Bangkok um, telling me about ayahuasca that he did hundreds of ceremonies before of ayahuasca which sounds like an insane amount of ceremonies to me but yeah I remember it like five years ago but I remember I wasn't ready so and I never spoke to this guy and and I was in Bangkok and then I was interviewing people for my channel and then suddenly I see a guy that like, approaches me and he's like do you remember me and this guy was the same guy that I met five years ago and that was the same guy that invited me to do ayahuasca ceremonies and he goes like his name is George and George goes like yo you remember me it was five years ago or longer that we met blah 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 and I looked at him and was like dude <laughs> you have no idea it's not like I remember you I was even thinking about you in the last couple of days even today because and I told him the story that I just told you about DMT and he was like you see you manifested me into existence and he brought me some cigars from Colombia. And I was like, wow, I, I actually started smoking cigar this year. So it's like, yeah, and he said, like, I thought so. So I brought them for you. I was almost sure I was gonna meet you. And I was like, wow, this is insane. Like I got the chills again, like what is going on? So then basically he invited me to go to Colombia to do a ceremony with one of his friends, which is a shaman and to go do it there. So what I did was 
planning it, so making sure that I was gonna do it, and I manifested ayahuasca as well, like I manifested, it came my way. I went to a conference in Bangkok for business and affiliate marketing, and then who do I meet there? A contact that leads me to take ayahuasca, and that's exactly what I mean, it comes, that it comes your way. It came my way. DMT came the same day I decided I was ready for ayahuasca and DMT, and after that, I had to wake other 10 days to find an invitation to go take ayahuasca in a very special place, which is Colombia, almost in Amazon. So, yeah, we, some of you can call it coincidences, but the coincidences aren't over. So what, I'm, what happened after was, since I started this journey with one of my best friends that she introduced me to DMT and she, you know, she had it there for me. Um, I decided to invite her as well to come with me on the journey because it felt fair. Like it felt fair that to share, continue sharing this journey together. So I just asked her what she was gonna do the second week of January. And she goes like, because the second week of January, I was planning to go to Colombia and do it. And she goes like, well, the second week of January, I, I think I will, uh, the second week of January, I think I will be in uh, Colombia. <laughs> and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, you want to be in Colombia in that time? Why? She asked me, I was like, yeah, well, I'm planning to do an ayahuasca ceremony with this guy. We just planned it during those days because that's when he's available. That's where I can go. And you're going to be fucking there too. So she couldn't believe it, she was ecstatic. And I just had another coincidence. But at this point, it's not a coincidence for me. Like I'm 100% sure that I was guided to this experience and to actually go do this experience in Colombia. And, and that's, I wanted to share this story before getting into the ayahuasca story because it's related. It's not unrelated. It's not like I want to know how it is. I want to know how it, 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 it's part of your journey when it comes down to ayahuasca. You need to have intentions. You need to get a calling. You need to have, it needs to come your way. And taking ayahuasca is no joke because first of all, once you have all of this, you need to prepare your body and mind to actually do it. So there, there's a strict diet. You can't eat red meat, you can't eat any dairy foods, you can't masturbate or have sex two weeks prior, you can't take any substances like no mushrooms, no alcohol use, whatever it is, which is easy for me, but for some addicts, for example, a lot of people treat their um, addictions, like heroin addictions, for example, by taking ayahuasca, but the hard part in, in order for ayahuasca to work is to actually cleanse your body before going doing that. So for many people, it might be very hard to be clean for two weeks to stay off their addictions before going to do ayahuasca. So it's no joke to prepare yourself for ayahuasca. And, uh, and that's exactly what I did. I, I followed all the diets. I didn't party. I didn't take other substances. I, I mean, it's easy. I don't, I don't do that anyways. Oh, we're arriving at Skydive. That was quick. Mm. And, and then... And then we flew to Colombia. So on, I think January seventh or so, I departed for Col I departed to Colombia, and that's where the journey started. But I'm gonna go skydive real quick, and I'm gonna continue the story probably here uh, between jumps. I'll continue sharing the experience of the of the ayahuasca. So I'm gonna cut now. And all right, just finished skydive we did four jumps with my friends freaking epic okay so i arrived in colombia and uh i had to get ready like i had to adjust first to the time zone because you don't want to get to i ask to the ceremony and be like completely tired because it's also likely that you can fall asleep um, some people do and in fact the shaman tells you to stay awake during the experience and try not to sleep. So try to fight the, the, the sleep. Although it's, I believe, also a bit hard to fall asleep, but you could. Anyway, so we drive up uh, to this location where we were doing the ceremony, which was 
on the hills of a, of a farm and it was a very simple farm. I might add a picture here. And, uh, and it's actually like, it felt very, it felt like the proper raw experience. Nothing fancy, just like very simple in the nature, uh, nothing rich. And we were welcomed by the shaman with uh, the wife, the dog, and the four-year-old daughter. And in that moment, I also chilled because I was worried, like, where am I going? I don't know the guy. It's like such a sensitive thing and a state that I would be in. So, of course, there's some worries that is everything going to be fine? Are you going to, I don't know, get robbed or so? Like, but I had a good feeling from day one, but still, you want to make sure. So once I saw the environment, I met the people, I was like, immediately like, okay, everything is good. I also told my parents because my parents knew where, where I was going and what I was going to do. So I relaxed them as well. And then we arrived like I would say like at 6 p.m., 5 p.m. And we only did ayahuasca at midnight. And in those hours, it was a long preparation, like setting up the place, getting cleansed. So they gave us like um, they cooked some herbs. Um, and they gave us this water to wash ourselves with to like fully uh, purify us and uh, from like I don't know the toxins that we could bring from out outside the 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 bad like to protect us also during the ceremony from like bad spirits from I don't know anything that could attack us basically and then uh, they made us sniff a few different things as in like uh, they purified us with like uh, some incense, I think it's called. So they were burning this around us to cleanse us as well. They made us um, inhale. No, first they made us inhale like a, something that smelled like alcohol, I would say, but it wasn't. It was some extract from trees. And uh, that was so strong. Like we had to take three different, like just smelling this liquid, like we washed our hands with it, you know, like as you do with alcohol and just like sniff it. And well, that got to my head and like three times, not that I, I just felt it strong. It didn't make me dizzy or like trippy, nothing like that. Like just to purify and let go of negative things. So we had to focus of what we wanted to let go. And I focused mainly on like some past traumas I had uh, in love, romantic relationships that I, I was still carrying with me. Um, still, be I say still carrying with me because after this experience, I actually felt I let everything go, which was interesting. So, um, and yeah, and then they made us smell basil, like many leaves of basil. You know how it smells? It smells already one, one leaf smells intense. The whole thing smelled beautiful, intense. And that's where we had to take three big inhales and focus on what we wanted to attract or, you know, solve and like a more positive intention, I would say. And then we had a conversation one-on-one -on -one with the shaman while we're here, you know, trying to make sure, he at least was trying to make sure that we're there for good reasons, not that we just want to trip balls, you know, but he already had a good feeling. But anyways, it was a good conversation because we got deep and I shared my story, my traumas, what happened in my life, what I'm doing, how I currently feel. And I told him that the, the ayahuasca called me during a difficult time of my life and so on and so forth and we set intentions my friend did the same thing and then uh, we signed some waivers that we are there under uh, by our own will that we agree that we might feel dizzy that we might vomit that uh, we might uh, have diarrhea <laughs> and that we uh, we we also ex say that we were sober we had to sign that we didn't do drugs in the, i don't know in the recently and all of that so they, they take some precautions also for themselves because they want to avoid any trouble. And then we started talking about how the ceremony is going to work. So they told us it's going to start at midnight and we're going to take a cup. And after two hours, we're going to do a cleanse and we're going to take another cup. And then depending how we feel, we're going to, we might do another cup or just call it a night. And they told us that if we feel like throwing up, we cannot just go to the bathroom and throw up there but they're gonna give us a bucket for everyone, which was just me, my friend, and the shaman. And we're gonna have to puke there because it, when we puke, we also puke the ayahuasca, which is sacred. It's the sacred wine. 
and we can't just throw it and throw up in a dirty place such as a bathroom where you know there is a lot of impurities so uh, they would after the ceremony they would take the vomit if we did vomit and do a ceremony and dispose it in the nature which was interesting and then I asked like what about if you have diarrhea do you have to you know uh, do it in a bucket or and they were like no 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 that's that's okay so I was like okay good I don't I didn't visualize myself sitting on a bucket anyway so I was comfortable and then uh, we got to they they gave a, they gave us some tobacco to put on the on the hand to lick it and that represented the masculine energy and then they gave us some coca leaves powder which doesn't give you I know what you're thinking it doesn't give you the the same effect as actual cocaine but uh, it's just like I would say it tastes like matcha and that would represent the feminine energy so kind of to balance it I didn't truly get the meaning of it but it was interesting to slowly and seeing how my taste would accept it and actually welcome it because licking this tobacco felt like licking a strong cigarette at the, at the beginning um, and then it just became more pleasant and actually welcomed it so I felt like I was doing something right spiritually speaking uh, for the as a preparation for the experience and uh, and yeah and then we took the first cup at midnight and we just laid down no talking no touching uh, they told us to focus on our own experience so no need to share with your partner my friend in this case and uh, and just focus on ourselves and I would say like at first I didn't I was like thinking about you know about welcoming it and being open no matter what happens if nothing happens it's good and then I would say about 30 40 minutes in you start feeling something that something is changing in your perception inside of your body similar to when you take mushrooms and it slowly starts to kick in because you're digesting it oh and by the way how does ayahuasca taste so I was always expecting that it tastes terrible but to be honest this first cup that we took was actually pretty good <laughs> like it was like a wine like imagine the taste of a wine I wouldn't necessarily order it at the restaurant uh, in terms of taste but it didn't taste bad so I was actually quite happy about it and 30 40 minutes in starts slowly kicking in I still I feel some funny feelings around my face I started seeing some kind of like lights like some energy something positive like uh, as if I was under some magical lights but then I started feeling very weird in my stomach and uh, I started feeling nausea a bit started feeling like the digestion would start and my gut was playing um, funny games and yeah and I, and I started feeling discomfort around the jaw like I had this pressure feeling on my jaw like if someone is like just pressuring in it and I felt like a block in my left side of the jaw and I, I wish someone would be there to just massage me and relax me because it started feeling very very bad and then um, and then this discomfort feeling was like imagine like mental and physical discomfort uh, like as if you have pain or something wrong but you don't can't relocate because it's a bit everywhere and uh, and yeah and then I started thinking about certain things like in my past romantic relationship and I remember I felt a lot of pain like a lot of pain and I remember kind of taking this pain and storing it in my stomach and I would feel like a lot of discomfort in my stomach and in my gut but it's kind of like if this this pain would slowly be stored in there and just left behind and then I would go on to the next thing feel pain and put it in there feel pain and put it in there then some memories came up from my uh, childhood like um, without going into many details but I remember this lake next to the uh, house that we have in the mountains and for some reason it appeared to be such a sad place and then after like focusing on this and asking myself because ayahuasca shows you some stuff from the past and it's usually not random like sometimes I would feel like oh yeah this is random but then I would take it back and be like why are you showing me this like what's what's behind it and I remember like from going from this feeling of sadness I felt this feeling of love towards my family because it's a place where I would go with my all my four grandparents I was lucky enough to meet them all 
and I felt this pressuring love towards that place that I, like reminded me of some memories of me eating ice creams with them like good times and then I don't know it's like it's hard to remember everything as well not that I was unconscious but it's just a lot happening and, and after that I remember I had this encounter with I guess mother ayahuasca that's how they call it and uh, it was magical because I felt like I was touched by um, by a god like this f divine feminine energy pure love and I remember just looking a bit on my left close with my eyes closed and just like greeting it like oh you're here and it felt so nice like some like a motherly love like something so strong and it's not like I visualized an entity I just felt it I didn't have strong visuals in general during this ayahuasca journey but it was just like a lot of feeling and those were probably the two most beautiful minutes or five minutes I don't know how long it was of the entire trip because right after that I started I kept struggling with pain and they tell you that this is a great quote by the way they tell you that the pain you feel is uh, inevitable so pain is inevitable but suffering is optional pain is inevitable suffering is optional so pain is there to guide you pain is the master pain tells you exactly what's wrong in your life and you can either use it the pain, you can either use the pain to let to let it guide you or you can fight it and just be confused by it and suffer but doing ayahuasca and when you have that pain it's not clear like let's say you work a lot in your life you stress yourself you have a lot of deadlines you put a lot of work on yourself and you feel stressed and you have pain you know where it's coming from you fall on your knees because you're running you have pain on your knees you know why you have pain and where it's coming from and also how to treat it but during ayahuasca <laughs> there is no map that tells you you're suffering because of this uh, you just feel it and you need to figure out where it's coming from because pain is the biggest master in our life and during ayahuasca you just feel you can't feel that's a subjective experience but you can feel a lot of pain and it's up to you to figure out where it's coming from so I was literally like going through departments of my life trying to understand where this could come from and then suddenly I would like sometimes just understand where it could come from and I wish to perhaps have, have more intentions going in, but at the same time, I didn't want to build expectations because it's my first time. But I did figure out a few things and I actually feel already that those are gone, that I released them, that I got purified from it. And so I started having a lot of pain, but then pleasure, pain and pleasure. And then like also starting enjoying the whole process. And then suddenly the shaman goes like, you want a second cup? And I was like, oh my god i'm already tripping balls here I'm, I'm not sure if i'm ready for a second cup but then i i was thinking about it a bit by myself and i was like you know what i came here i want to go through the hole like i want to go into the darkness I, i'm i'm here to to experience it all so i don't want to you know pussy out and uh so i was like okay let's do another cup this time it was a different type of ayahuasca like they had a few different ones and this one didn't taste as good as the first one. It was this dense liquid that tasted like Jägermeister. And a uh, heavy, heavy taste and also heavier liquid in your stomach. Like it felt much heavier. And uh, that wasn't, f after that, <laughs> it wasn't fun anymore. The pain was so overwhelming and they started making I wouldn't say music because music in that moment it felt like a compliment like they made sounds and I just couldn't handle those sounds like my friend was kind of enjoying it I just wanted it to stop the shaman and the assistant they were making sounds with like instruments and I just wanted like imagine you have like a hangover you have like a strong headache and someone just like plays the drums like boom 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 without any rhythm no nothing that's exactly how it felt I was like just stop I was covering my ears I, I didn't want to be there and I was trying to stay quiet but I just couldn't I just wanted it to stop then I started thinking no's I wanted to throw up I got pain everything and then they stopped but I kept fighting and I was like really suffering and then at some point I was like oh fuck I'm getting super sick and I was like thinking that if I felt sick during the trip I would have diarrhea but not vomit because I usually don't throw up like I never throw up but I was the guy that went to the bucket 
and there I was just like next to it was next to the fire as well but still like I was like in pain and then I threw everything up I purged that's how they call it you purge everything out all this pain that I was witnessing and just like felt a relief but consider that I had nothing in my stomach besides ayahuasca because I was on a fast since like more than 15 hours I only had an acai bowl like 10 hours before but acai is like not really much so I was like I was just puking but at some point nothing came out and after that I started feeling way more relaxed but still in pain, like I was still in pain. Like obviously you feel relaxed after you release it, but still like purging mentally, physically, spiritually. And then I wanted to lay down and just relax, but they actually made us sit on two chairs, me and my friend. And they started doing this shamanic ritual of like cleanse, cleansing us with like some, I believe it was again coca leaves, but like dried and just Putting it, so I'm making shamanic sound. Like drums, bomb, bomb, bomb. It felt like an exorcism. Like I wanted to leave my body. Like it was the most painful thing. And actually, thinking about it, like it's not logical that it's so painful. It's just like some sounds, and that's it. It's like, why would you? But in that moment, I couldn't handle it. Like it was. 20 30 minutes like that sitting on the chair and they told me i should not cross my arms or my legs and not doing that was the most difficult thing in that moment because that's all i wanted to do i wanted to just wrap up like a bowl and like protect myself from everything that was going on i couldn't handle it it was the most painful thing and after those 20 minutes were over i was fucking drained because i was already like in like i don't know two three hours of pure agony trying to figure out where this pain comes from plus this cleanse and i was just like fucking drained like i could not handle anything more and uh i asked if smoking tobacco was fine because they had cigars there just pure tobacco and i said yes so smoking that cigar i wouldn't say it was pleasant because that would be too much but it felt like a grip to reality that look and it started calming me down and then I started opening up and speaking with them. I, I was more clear because I was already like two hours. I was like four or five hours in already since the start of the, since the first cup. And, uh, and then I started talking to them and like, yeah, just releasing and asking like, what the fuck is going on? Like, why am I suffering so much? And after some point, they asked me if I wanted a third cup and I thought about it. I was like, fuck, I'm. I'm already fucking dying, but they, they told me they would add an extract of some tree that would help me relax my mind. Placebo or not, I went for the third cup against all my will, scared as fuck, I'm not gonna lie, like I was terrified, but that third cup helped me relax, like it was good again, like I took it, lay down, and I was in peace, and I was in peace for the next few hours. And in fact, I fell asleep. They were making music, this time beautiful music. And so I was waking up sometimes, falling asleep, waking up sometimes, falling asleep, but I was in peace. I literally felt relieved from all the pain, from all the pain. And I was like, oh my God. And then I would say it was seven in the morning, seven hours in, I said, I'm going to bed. And it was over. And uh, I went to bed, but I could not sleep. My mind was like, processing everything and I started talking to my parents asking what do you think about this lake in the mountains and they both said including my grandma that they all associated with a sad place like as a sad place there are some happy memories but it was a family feeling that that place is sad turns out my grandma almost died in that lake because that lake has some vortexes because it's in a mountain and it sucks the water down and she got sucked down repeatedly and she almost drowned there. So who knows, maybe that was the association with that emotion that my grandma felt that I had in me through her. Nevertheless, I felt like I got more love for that place after this experience. Throwing up everything helped me a lot. And then at some point, I, I, the, the sec during the day I could not sleep. Maybe I slept one hour somewhere in between. And uh, I had, I went to the bathroom to do, you know, have a meeting. It was the best meeting of my life. It felt so good. 
Actually, let me go in the car and put some light on. I had the best meeting of my life and that was like also part of the purification. Like consider that I was pretty much constipated for a few weeks. Like I couldn't really have a good meeting, but that time, oh my God, it helped me release a lot. So you see, it's like a magical cleanse happening. And during the day, oh, I didn't mention the four year old daughter that was there, took a little zip of ayahuasca and went to bed. And I was really impressed because considering that in Europe, you go to jail if you have a few grams of even just marijuana. And there, they give it to kids with a good intention and it seems to help. So that's the different reality we live in and they live in. And I don't think it's wrong, like to some extent, like uh like to be open about it and understand how it could work then we can argue all day long if it's good for a kid or not but the kid looked absolutely fine she was pure love like such a, an amazing kid just playing uh, with nothing like she had no toys but she was so creative so loving so like open like her heart was open she was a beautiful child the only thing that <laughs> I don't think it's an appropriate place for kids because the day after she just wanted to play all the time and I didn't sleep. I had the in most insane trip of my life and she just wouldn't stop talking and trying to play with me. So imagine having a hangover and there is a kid that doesn't stop talking and just continues screaming, playing, doesn't let you rest in the bed because you walk in the room and, and that was like another purge for me like the whole day. So at some point we decided to go for a walk, me and my friend, but trust me, walking that day was not as pleasant as other days. And uh, back in the car. Oh, and, uh, and yeah, that was like, the whole day was bad, 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 bad. And then at some point I could relax a bit in the nature because we left the house and I was like in, in the nature beautiful place in the mountains 2000 kilometers sorry 2000 meters uh 6000 feet above sea level and you know those since it was colombia i could not not think about uh narcos and it's the exact same uh, views that you can see when they go in the nature they're beautiful mountains river through the mountains sun clouds beautiful clouds so that helped me relax a lot that connection with nature but then the sun went down at like around 6 p.m. and then it was a six hours wait to try to stay awake maybe trying to sleep in between but I just couldn't knowing that the second night was gonna come the second ceremony and I just couldn't um, I was I was terrified terrified to do it because I felt so much pain during it and then during the day even that I just felt like I kept purging nonstop and uh, and yeah then it came midnight and uh, I opened up sharing my fears and I was like yo if it's as bad as last time I don't think I can handle it like too much pain but they told me to keep an open mind and uh, that they could probably end up well and I knew it like deep down I know like I decide how it's gonna go like I influence it at least the ayahuasca will still take over but I am the one that decides like I, I can influence it positively or negatively like everything in life so I took it and scariest cup of my life to drink it taste was all right nothing crazy the, the day before was better and they actually told me that this one could be more potent as soon as it started kicking in I was trying to welcome it in a very positive way, uh, telling myself that it's going to be good, that I'm not going to suffer because I, I believe that the ayahuasca, the medicine, gives you what you need. So I should be uh, okay because my body needed a break. Need my, my, all my existence needed a break from all the pain. So I started and I was like really trying to focus on the good and I started feeling good at the beginning. I was like, oh, there you go. But then I was faced again with the confusion of like having pain and being like, should I go deep in the pain or should I let go of the pain? And I kept doubting if I should lean into it and like 
face it and that would mean throwing up because I really felt like I could throw up easily again and then I was just telling myself let it go let it go let it go and after I, an hour a good hour of struggling and like moving around like, oh, like oh. I kept telling myself let it go let it go and then at some point I just clicked and I let it go and letting it go was nice <laughs> It was nice. I started having one of those light DMT visuals with like patterns that you close your eyes and see all these patterns and these colors. And I realized that I think I went over everything I had to go over during this trip, during those two days. I got offered to take more, but I refused because uh, I didn't feel the need. It's a medicine. So I felt that was enough, that I didn't have to like taking more would mean trip and I was so tired already and I I didn't want to take take just for taking like I felt like I was good I finalized it on a good note and I felt that was it for this time that was it and in fact we just started making music with the guys I was playing the, the, the drums the guys were you know making music singing beautiful voices on the guitar and I was just like there and it was like beautiful energy beautiful few hours smoked a cigar laughed with the boys and my friend on the other hand was like really trying to have an intense experience but it felt more like that's my point of view of what she was doing felt more like wanting to go to la la land and like have that strong visuals uh but she really couldn't and i think that's okay because it's a medicine like i think like you want a trip take something else um, but yeah, I think she didn't get, I think their expectations was, were not met. Like she was hoping for, to have more stronger experiences, but she felt it was also right in the end. Like that's what, what was needed. And yeah, and then this is how it finished. And then the next few days, uh, we went out, try, like we wanted to like go back and enjoy life. We went out to Medellin to some, where it was like more crowded and stuff and music and we couldn't handle it like we w didn't want to be there like we got drained immediately we were tired we had to stay calm like that was a clear instruction from the medicine to us like yo don't don't even think about partying don't go anywhere just isolate yourself and we were craving nature and peace and calm energy and and yeah and then we just spent two chill days and and I started like feeling different afterwards i started feeling like i want to be like i started thinking about having a girlfriend because i'm single and, and i was like interesting we went to a shop to buy some clothes and i saw a beautiful dress for a girl and i told my friend like you should buy it and then she's like no i was like fuck but i still want to buy it like but for who and i was like i would buy it for my future girlfriend and i did and i bought this beautiful dress for a future girlfriend uh, I don't know her size you might wonder but I just felt like she's gonna wear it at some point so I just bought it and then I started feeling like it would be good to have sex again at some point but then I started thinking like maybe we should have sex with a girl that I love and that's a very cute thought given that I you know I, I, I always felt love towards my romantic partners but I think like the last time I thought that I could only have sex with someone I loved was when I was 18. So it brought me back, like kind of like purified me from that need that like uh, kind of internal monkey that just wants to fuck around, like more like I want a good relationship and, and I still feel like it, you know, like um, for example, I went back to Dubai three days later and I went to the gym and in my gym there are many beautiful girls, but um, I'm not short or like wife materials like the majority of them because they are here for a different interest at least that's that's what it looks like i never judge a book from its cover but when you've been around in dubai you can kind of tell some sometimes <laughs> doesn't apply to all the girls of course but you know uh, i'm not stupid um and uh and yeah i just was just there and i usually like i engage i talk crave no cravings like I, I need a good girl like I want a good girl uh, and there are many bitches in Dubai so it's like I don't feel like doing that and um, and yeah and then I started feeling a few days after like this I kept purging I had um, 
these memories of my childhood coming up. My parents divorced when I was eight. My father moved to Spain and I missed him so much. And I just started crying, but not crying like I would cry now. I was crying like I was 10 or eight again. Like I also, the sound felt different. Just crying over the time that my dad left and that my parents divorced. Thinking about my the last house where we all lived together, me and my parents, and just feeling so nostalgic and pain and just releasing it. So bringing up all the past traumas in a very genuine and pure way. And I got very emotional. And, uh, and yeah, and that was, I would say, the last strong episode after. But I still feel guided. I felt, I thought about business during the, my ayahuasca trip. And everything I'm doing, everything that I'm doing feels right. As long as I do it with love. So that was the takeaway. Do business, do anything you want as, as long as you're doing it with love. So you're putting love in there. So you take care of your colleagues, you take care of your team, you take care of yourself. You're doing it with love, not because you have to, not with stressing yourself too much, but with joy and love for yourself and for the others. Because a lot of times we, when we do business, we don't love ourselves. We end up in a cycle of stress, of like following in impulses, of notifications and messages and just going on the next thing, on the next thing, on the next thing, on the f- falling into a vortex that does make us feel good. And nothing usually comes, uh, nothing good comes out of that. Sometimes, yeah, you have those phases where you have to be, uh, you have, they're more intense. But always remember to have good intentions and love for yourself and love for your colleagues and not become those robotic machines that just acts without thinking and feeling anymore. And we all have been there. I'm pretty sure uh, most of you guys watching are doing business. But any, also without business, like it's a human thing where you can be studying, you can be working, you have the same experience. And that was a strong reminder. So that was definitely one of the good takeaways. And yeah, this video is pretty long, so I'm going to keep it short. I'm probably going to talk about it again. Um, I want to know what you think of this. Uh, comments are open for everyone. Ask anything. Share anything. This is a safe place to share worries about trying things, uh, experiences or similar experiences that you had with plant medicines, intentions that you want to do it, uh, what's the right time, ask anything because it's a very, it's a great topic, it's a phenomenal topic, it's a boost in self-growth if done in the right circumstances at the right time of your life, if you're being called to it with the right intentions and openness and no weird or extreme expectations from it. It's a tool, it's a medicine, and it heals you. And would I recommend it? Yes, following just what I said, you should um, be in a safe space, in your have a, in the right time in your life, being guided. Not, it's not a recreational thing. No psychedelics should be used as a recreational thing because it's a tool for sub for personal growth, and you should absolutely take it in a serious way. So I don't endorse any use of it in like unsafe way, none of that. And, uh, but it's a, it is a phenomenal way to grow. And it's, you always, it's always, it always brings a subjective experience. Nothing is the same. Like every trip I did in my life is always unique and different. And uh, yeah, guys, I peace and love and see you in the next vlog. Peace.